Roger Mudfossil University today going over Tesla's death ray and I was watching it on the Science Channel. They are, they have fabulous presentations and they do a good a good um, you know investigation of of things very very seriously done. I mean that's a good sized Tesla car and what they were trying to prove is that this death ray could really have happened and therefore it, it, it leads credence to the fact that Tesla may have been murdered in 1943 by someone, and they're not sure who. And the theory goes that it could have been the Russians, it could have been the Hitler's guys, it could have been uh, the CIA or the FBI, whoever was around there from the United States at that time. And uh, we did control his papers and so forth for nine years, apparently, after he died. And apparently there are things missing from it that might have related to this. But if this is what they're trying to prove as a death ray, I dispute this. I don't, uh, this is not going to be in a death ray by any means whatsoever that I can determine. Now, Tesla might have had something else, but he, all they did really, in my, in my, and I'm not trying to run anybody down, I'm just saying that what they did was they created a tremendous amount of capacity of electrons in this, this device, and once you discharge them, and you say, okay, go out into the world, they want to find the Earth. Electrons are not negative, the Earth is the positive attractive force for all negatives. It's earth ground. I mean, it's fully understood. I'm, you know. Now, having said that, they put a drone up in the air, and that's what exploded. Now, we're going to watch the footage, but my contention here is that that electricity, these electrons that are coming out of this little stubby ray gun that they put on here to direct it towards the drone are only leaving this to try to find positives. All right? They're finding some in the air, through the air, but they're looking for a, a bigger source of them and they are a source here and there's a source down here at, at the earth. Down at the earth. Let me back this out. Here. There's a source down here at the earth and there's a source out here. Now, if the source at the Earth is closer than this source of electron, of protons, then the thing's going to go to Earth. It's as simple as that. If this is closer, it's going to hit that. But in addition, some of it will come to the Earth, and this is what we see. So watch this very, very carefully. All right, they're going to go, uh, and uh, they're showing. It's very impressive. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm very impressed by what they did. So let's watch what they did here. Um, now, there goes the drone. It's up in the air, and they're watching it. Now, it's not far from, I mean, it's far enough, which it's pretty impressive looking. But it, see, there it goes. Now, let's stop it there. <laughs> I like that guy. <laughs> that would be me. All right, now, what, what happened here was when they tripped it off, watch what happens. I'm going to try to do this frame by frame. The thing's going to come out and pow, and you're going to see just an enormous shower of electrons because they've all invaded each other's space and they're shooting out like little stars of sparks. It's a shower and they did, they, they've captured it in slow motion. And then you're also going to see a little zzzz coming to ground because it's going to try to find wherever there's a, a positive. So here it goes. All right, boom, there it is sitting in the air. It's coming over closer, boom, there, whoops, ah, I didn't get it in time. Let me go back over just a hair, okay. That's right after the blast. Okay, and it's it, now it's starting to expel its electrons, and this is now looking for another place it can dump electrons, and that's Earth. All right, let's go back to that. All right, you're going to have to look really, really careful. There's two hits. What happens is when they discharge that, the first blast goes out and explodes the thing because it's it's forced enough electrons in it to be a point where the positives no longer attract electrons. However, instantaneously they expel and it takes another hit because it now becomes positive once again. And additionally, it will try to dissipate energy to Earth at the same time. Because what is, what, all you have here is minus particles. 
They're tiny little minus particles. And they bump into other minus particles and they bounce against each other. When you have so many of these coming at such a high intensity and hitting the minuses that are in here, it bounces them and they explode like a, a, a other way, it's literally like a, an atomic bomb buzz. But this is the electron particles, not the nuclear particles. So watch it carefully. You're going to see one blast, it'll stop, and then as that reconstitutes itself, you'll catch another one because it will now become positive. It'll be, all those electrons will have gone away and it will now assume back to its positive potential and pick up that second hit. All right, now I'm going to try to stop it correctly, but it's hard. Boom. All right, see that? Boom. The first one hit it. It's exploded. It's like it's done. You think, oh, it's all over. Well, it's not all over. It is now, you see this? This is what's called Cheryankov radiation, or it's a high-frequency visible light that really is above glowy white. It's, 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 I believe it's, it's a Cheryankov radiation where the, the, it's been so impacted, you end up with these particles, and, I, and we've seen them in our experiments. Now, additionally, see, now this doesn't know what to do. It says, I don't have any more electrons out there to go to. I mean, any more positives to go to. That's flooded with electrons. There's too many electrons out there. He said, well, I don't know what to do. And it's going to say, okay, go to the Earth, and then it'll say, oh, wait a minute, the guy lost his electrons, because that's the flood, and it's instantaneous they come back. Boom, they're back. And then this says, hey, it's back to positive. Boom, it comes back and it says, now we're going to explode the hell out of it. Now watch. Boom, there's the second one. Do you see it? And that's when it just exploded again. And then there's another one. And now it's gone up in the air. Now, and they're all happy about it. And they should be. It's a fabulous experiment. Now, there's another place where they show it, I believe, in slow motion. I'll see if I can show you that. And then you'll see the really explosive nature of, of electrons. All right, I think we got some slow motion here. Let's see if we can see what like. Uh, all right, there's the drone. They're looking at it. And I'm going to stop it every here and there. Okay, there it goes. There's the first one. Now, you're seeing these sparks come out of here. Well, what is a spark? Is that metal? Is it plastic? Is it... What is it? It's literally electrons being bumped into and forced to, to explode out of there. Now, this has hit it and it's exploded and now it doesn't know what to do because it, 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 there's no more positiveness. It's so invaded with negatives now. And there it goes again. Now we're seeing the, that's the seriousness. Now it has taken on, it's already been invaded with electrons. They've come out it's reconstituted, and that second hit shows you the radiation. You look at that. See that? You see what it's doing? All right. That is not. That is that. That's electron radiation. That's not like little particles of metal. You see it? All right. And there's your little electron bolt going back there, and you got the little bits of the thing left. See? It? And that's it's a fabulous experiment. They did a ton of work. However, I don't believe that this has any capability to shoot down anything that's further away than the top of the Tesla coil. Because Earth has all the positives that want those negatives, and anything else that's flying around up there that's a big mass has a bunch of positives too, and will accept those negatives. But it has to be closer than the Earth. That's what I'm seeing. All right, now in my experiments, we've, this is electron flood theory, we've shown light accelerated, we've seen Cheryankov radiation, seen electron neutrinos, seen the charged particle carriers, the boson particles going through the air, we've seen magnetic fields surrounding those particles in the ether, we've seen the polarized ether particles in those surrounding fields, da, 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 all the way around showing their magnetic polarization. We have seen the right-hand rule demonstrated where the electrons turn to the right as they flow. 
We've seen 100% of every electronic interaction explained, gravity and anti-gravity, and an atomic bomb is nothing more than anti-gravity where they force all the electrons together, they explode away, you have a positive mass, it's ejected from the Earth because of the Earth's positive attraction, and it is now positive and it now is not attracted and it is repelled. Look at an atomic bomb, it goes straight off the Earth like, it's, it's like somebody just shot it off like a bullet into air, and the mass of the the reconstituting positiveness is in the air, rising straight up in the air, pulling electrons back in to become a normal state of matter again. And as it does, it's, it elevates straight up in the air because it's anti-gravity anti at that point. And, and um, that is where your brilliant white light gr is now, is up in the air. Originally, it was at the ground when all the electrons left. So, I've, and I'm this, they ask, oh, why do you know about this stuff? Well, I did this stuff for a living. Uh, I worked in the semiconductor industry back when we had to figure everything out, and there was a lot to figure out. So, you know, I do have some background, and I'm not completely illiterate at this. And, and, and I believe that I fully understand now what's going on. There is no neutrons. There's no neutrons. There's no neutrons at all. Everything is po positive, which is your protons, and then your electrons, your little tiny, very, very extremely powerful electrons, flood the neutrons, I mean the protons, until the mass of the core becomes essentially stabilized in a neutral condition, except more electrons want to flood those positives, and they get into the orbital configuration called quantum mechanics and the next ones come and they will hold those at bay so you got your core has turned just slightly negative because it's been invaded by all the negatives they are locked solid to the positives there is no neutral forces in there at, at a point it cannot accept them anymore and then they begin to pile up in the orbitals that's the new atomic model no neutrons and it is called electron flood theory Every electronic interaction works with, uh, with um, electron flood theory. The sun is of extreme violent mass, which is every electron is fighting each other in their orbitals, and eventually some get thrown into space. And when they do, they leave the mass of complete matter, so there's no more nucleus with it. It spins off into space as an electron. And, and when it's in space, there is nothing for it to collide with. It becomes dark. It's still matter. It's still energy. It is now dark matter and dark energy. That's where they've been missing everything. Now, as it comes through space, if it hits something like the space station or something out here, it lights it up. You can see it. That's what happens. If it doesn't hit anything, it just continues through that space, staying away from each other because they are all negative particles, more mostly there are some nuclear particles that come out of there that are protons I'm sure but mostly it's it's um, the solar wind is electrons as it comes as soon as it hits the atmosphere and collides with electron uh, uh, protons that are in the gases and so forth they begin to display as as the visible light spectrum they also are pulled to earth now the the earth pulls as many electrons as it can take and then they collect in the ionosphere out here. And that we fully understand. It's a complete saturation of electrons out here because they can't get in. The Earth has enough electrons to go already. But they still want to get in there. That's why they collect out here. And then when you get showers of particles that are abnormally high radiation, that's what protects us, is this ring of ionospheric particles and they're charged up because the earth spins and as the earth spins it has magnetic stripes and those magnetic stripes are exactly like the windings in a motor as it spins around inside of this ether it's it's creating pulse 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 and it's creating magnetic lines of flux around the earth and that's what fights off the uh, the radiation all right, the, what I'm just talking about, the magnetic lines of uh, magnetic fields are set up around the Earth because of these magnetic stripes. You see that? These are all plus, minus, plus, minus. When they come up, they split. They go plus, minus, plus, minus, plus, minus. And you, you get these stripes like a barcode in the Earth. And as the Earth spins, that's identical to what happens in an electric motor and in, in the field coils have your electric particles 
your, your electrons and as your magnetic your magnetism pulses those electrons you create the magnetic lines of flux it's, 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 it's just think of it this way you got negatives all around here and you got a positive negative positive negative positive so as that spins it goes plus minus plus plus so it's hitting move 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 and that's what's happening to your magnetic field it's creating the, the lines around the earth and that's that's what protects us